She gets into the accident. She immediately calls 911. She calls her twin sister. Her twin sister shows up. The police end up showing up. And now the twin sister, Sarah, is telling the police that she was the one driving. Okay, they switched identities of who was driving and crashed into the buggy. Two children lost their lives. Two others were injured as well. All four of these little ones were on their way to school that morning. Now, Sarah kept insisting that she was the driver of the silver SUV that was involved in this accident. However, what the ladies slash twins didn't know was that the officer had a recording device and it was sat down and when he walked away, Sarah and Samantha continued to talk. On the recording device, uh, they caught Sarah saying, I think that one of the guys is on to me, but I don't really care. There's no way they would ever know the difference between the two of us, so they can't tell. After hearing that recording, investigators quickly realized that Samantha and Sarah had lied to them. Then when the officers asked Sarah for her ID, again, Sarah's the one telling the cops that she was driving, she said it was in the back of her black SUV, not the silver one that was actually involved in this accident. When they asked her, why is your ID in the back of her car? Sarah said that after the crash, she put her ID in Samantha's car, which she admitted that that vehicle was actually her vehicle, but she told the police that they switched vehicles just for the day. They, the cops had to be like, Oh my goodness, what is going on here? Mind you guys, Sarah was on parole. She had just gotten out of prison not too like far before this incident. They, they didn't understand why she would just take the fall for her sister, Samantha. But when the investigators went and spoke to the district store manager of that high V store that Samantha and Sarah both worked at, the investigators found out that they believed that Sarah would take the fall for Samantha because Samantha had taken care of Sarah's children when Sarah went to prison. Then the investigators ended up finding out that Samantha had actually called the HR department at Hy-Vee not long after the crash and told the manager, y'all, after the crash, she calls HR. She's on the phone with the manager and says, I effed up. I just killed two Amish people. They were little ones. I just hit an effing buggy. I'm not sober. I'm actually high on Literally, you had to have been completely twisted in another universe to do any of this anyways. The court documents also show that the investigators recovered even more incriminating messages from Samantha. A friend had texted her about the crash, not knowing at the time that Samantha was involved. And Samantha responded to this friend saying, I don't think you realize that I did that. I hit that Amish buggy and I'm the one that ended up ending the life of two people. I made Sarah take the fall for it so I wouldn't go to prison. Security footage from the day of the crash uh, shows Samantha leaving the parking lot of the store that they work at in a, a silver SUV at 7.58 a.m. The crash happened just before 8.30 a.m. and it only takes about 25 minutes to get from the scene of the crash to the store where she was seen on the security footage. Then when the investigators listened back to that 911 call that came from Samantha's phone, they could hear Samantha saying, I didn't see them coming up over the hill, seemingly admitting that she was the one driving. The investigators then executed a search warrant at Samantha's home on September 26th, which was the day after the crash, and Sarah answered the door and said Samantha had moved away. Now, during this search, however, investigators found Samantha inside the home. Samantha gave her phone to the investigators and provided a sample. The results showed that she did in fact at that time have in her system as well as some people believe that this is the reason why Sarah was so willing to take the fall for her twin sister Samantha. Samantha had already been convicted twice of a DUI at this time and now she had just killed two little ones. The next day after this, a social worker shows up to the school of Sarah's 13-year-old daughter and said that the daughter admitted to her 
my mom wasn't the one driving. She drove to the scene after the crash happened. The investigators also found that Samantha had Googled things on her phone like, what happens if you get in an accident with an Amish buggy and kill two people? Like, how much more, I mean, precise do you have to be about your Google searches? She also Googled how to lock an iPhone that cops have. And she Googled, if you hit a buggy and kill two people, are you going to prison? Now, the witnesses told the police that the driver was a blonde woman wearing a high V shirt. They also said that there was another woman there that looked exactly like the other woman who just kind of appeared out of nowhere on the scene of the accident. Now, when the officers arrived, Sarah was wearing a black coat and black leggings. Samantha was wearing a red shirt that looked consistent with a high V employee uniform, but then she changed into a black tank top. Now, a crash reconstructor proved that the driver of the silver SUV was traveling between 63 and 71 miles per hour at the time of the crash, even though the speed limit was 55 miles per hour. And there was no like obstructions in the way. So over like over 1400 feet, completely clear, she should have been able to see the buggy. Now the impact of this crash was so powerful that it shot the buggy into a ditch and it ended up ending the horse's life that was pulling it like that. At this point, Samantha has been charged with 21 counts, including criminal vehicular manner, leaving the scene of a crash, failing to provide insurance, careless driving, and speeding. Sarah is now facing more than a dozen felony charges for taking responsibility for criminal acts and aiding an offender after attempting to deceive the police. Now, something I just could not wrap my mind around is the fact that they have been charged, but they have not been arrested. Okay, and I'm like trying to figure this out. Like what? I found an article and I'll pop this piece up here that said that the charges basically were not significant enough to warrant an arrest. In my unprofessional opinion, please go do your own research, form your own opinion, and they have not been arrested yet. So I'm gonna give you guys my opinion if everything that we have heard is true, okay? But I'm thinking this, this, these are dangerous women if this is true. Okay, this is somebody that just continues to do these things. And now two little ones have lost their life. And those charges has not warranted enough for an arrest. I can tell you guys without a shadow of a doubt, if they were in Florida, they'll arrest you here for driving on a suspended license. That's it. Just drive. If your license is suspended and you get pulled over, you're going to jail. That's it. You ain't even got to be doing nothing wrong. Maybe it's a traffic stop. Maybe you got your seatbelt on, doing two miles under and everything. You're going to jail. The family of these little ones that uh, unfortunately lost their lives and the surviving ones ended up going to the hospital, they do have a GoFundMe set up and they are grateful for any support and all support. It's hard to, to go on without the rest and yet we feel God has helped us and has, he knew we needed Hannah. She flew, I'm not sure how far, on the pavement and the angels were protecting us. This seems like such a reckless situation. I mean, again, how, out of your mind do you gotta be to be calling HR, texting people, your friends texting you, oh my gosh, did you hear about that devastating buggy crash where the two little ones, I mean, they lost their lives and you literally text them back and say, you don't know that's me, I did that. Like, you gotta be in another zone. And from what I could find, the women have court in the end of March of this year, their first appearance, and, they, and the other one has court in April. I will be surprised if they show up at court. I just can't believe it. I cannot believe that this does not warrant an arrest. Maybe I don't understand of why the law is that way in Minnesota, but to me, that's disturbing and nerve wracking. And it would make me feel unsafe as a citizen driving on the road, knowing that you could literally push it that far, do all of that, and still it's not enough to be held in a place where you can't hurt anybody else. I don't know. Um, 
very sad. Very, very sad. And I do hope the family heals. They do sound like they're doing the best that they can. And the other little ones who have lived that experience. Love you guys. Thank y'all for watching. Don't forget to go outside and drink your water. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.